uh, where is that it it is uh, week one week two and then it should come down right yes Yes, yes it is showing yeah. that way. Yeah. Open your portal, it will be shown. It is showing, sir. Okay. Okay, so we'll get started. So I'll just uh, it'll be a repeat. No, it won't be a repeat. It'll be. Okay, so. Okay, so is the screen visible to all of you? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so just just like last time, what we'll do is. Uh, please don't so the same set of rules, right? So please don't interrupt me while I'm speaking, but I'll pause once in a while and ask for your suggestions, your answers to questions that I pose. Right? So we will follow the same set of rules. So what we will do today is uh, we will do a mix of Week, week one, there isn't much that is left over, right? So we were we have looked at strings, different data types, right? So we started by looking at integers, floating point numbers, float values. Then we looked at strings. Okay, we looked at basic operations, basic arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, float division, and then the modulo operator. Right? So we looked at all these. So some things which were uh, left out. Maybe very briefly, I'll go over them. So the exponentiation operator, I don't know if I did it. Sir, I have a doubt. Sorry? I have a doubt, sir. Uh, no, so as I said, so doubts will come. when I, I'll interrupt. So I'll okay, ask so you if you have any doubts, we can discuss them. Okay. So the exponentiation operator is something that I left out. Right? So last time, so this is one thing. Did we do relational operators? Like uh, comparison x greater than y, x greater than or equal to y. I, I hope you're all aware of that, right? So I don't think I need to separately go into that. So that is uh, one. We didn't discuss logical operators at all, right? So for example, 3 greater than 2 and 5 less than 7. Right? So we didn't discuss this. So what will happen if I run this? True, sir. Sir, it is true. True, right? So so this is what mm. will happen. So this I, I hope you all know this. We'll we'll do a lot of logical operators today, right? So logical operators were left out. So there are three operators. So not and or. Right? So these are the three. So not of say three less than five. What will be the output if I run this? False. Sir. This is false, right? So three less than five is true, but not of that is going to be false, right? So this is uh I'll just create one text cell here so that it may not delete this. So these are uh, logical. Okay, so not is one. Uh, this we already discussed, right? The first one was what? Three greater than two and say five less than seven. So this is going to return two. Now the other one is or, right? So three greater than zero or. Five greater than say seven. So what will this return? True, true, true. It will return true, right? So even if one of this these two is true, it will return true. If both of them are false, it will return false. So it will evaluate to false. Okay, so that is the idea of or, right? Not and or. We'll anyway discuss this in a in a proper problem solving session. Right. So this is logical operators, exponentiation operator. We have discussed. Is there anything else that we have? So strings, when we discuss strings, we have looked at indexing strings, slicing strings, right? So when you when it comes to indexing and slicing, we have, we have looked at both negative indexing and the usual positive indexing. So slicing, we have done a mix of different things, right? When it, when it came to slicing, we also looked at the length of a string and we looked at what are empty strings. So this is what happened last week. 
Okay, so what I would like to do is, I'll I'd like to jump into if conditions. So I had a question: Does the logical operator work for alphabets also? Like in the alphabetical order, if we put like A greater than B or B greater than C, like that. You mean to say strings, right? Not. Yeah. Yeah, it will it will work, right? So. So it will convert this to something called the ASCII ASCII value. So, if you want to know more about this, there is a function in Python called ORD ORD of A. So, every every string, every character is going to be associated with some value, right? So, ORD of A is going to be 97. So, if you look at ORD of B, that's going to be 98. So, since 98 is greater than 97, B is greater than A, right? So, likewise, you have ORD value for capital letters also. So, in, interestingly, what will happen is if you type and, um, capital A less than small a, that's going to give you true, right? True. Because so this is you you can compare strings also, right? So or other characters like this. So what is the ORD? So ORD is uh, I, I'll show, I'll I've written about this in the book, so I'll just uh, share the link here. I will comment the link. One second. So does it give the ASCII equivalent of that? Yeah, like yeah, this? something like that. So just give me a second. This is where is it discussed? Uh, the ORD. Comparison of Okay, so that this is this comes from the so this is called uh, I'll, I'll just copy this uh, and are you able to see the screen now? I've changed the screen. Yes, sir. Okay, so this yes, is sir. there is a section on what is called lexicographic ordering, right? So how are strings compared? So there, uh, this uh, ordinal value, uh, the ORD, not ordinal value, the ORD of a of characters is discussed. So this is not extremely important as far as the core understanding of Python is concerned. Even if you don't know this, it should be fine. But it's always worth knowing. So what I'll do is uh, I will share this link here. Okay, if you are interested, you can go and refer to this. Okay, how are Things compared. Lexicographic ordering is what it's called. Okay, so let's now jump into conditional statements, and that will be the core of this lecture, right? So here, what we'll do is we'll do a bunch of problems, right? So I have a set of problems with me, and we we look at how to use conditional statements as we solve problems. Okay, so that's what we are going to do. So this is probably a bit to zoom in, so I'll zoom out a bit. Okay, so this is the question. So accept an integer as input. If it is positive, then print positive. Okay, print the string positive. This is what we are supposed to do. Okay, so how do we accept the input? This is something you must know already. Sorry, if else is not taught. Uh, no, that's what I'm going to do now. Okay. Oh. Okay, so how do you accept an input? In uh, actually, create a variable. int of input is equals to int of input. Okay, right. So of input. This is how we accept input, right? So the way we check if something is positive is we use what is called. So this if is something that should be very very familiar to you from computational thinking, right? So it's nothing new. So if x is greater than zero, then what should you do? Positive. Print print positive, positive, print positive print positive. Okay, so print positive. Uh, otherwise, we don't know, right? We have not the question is not ask you what or the question does not tell you what to do if it is not positive. It's only telling you if it is positive, print the string positive, right? That's all it's asking you to do. So let's just try it out for a few values. You will see what happens. So as long as you enter a positive number, that's going to give you a positive. Right. So, what will happen if I enter the number zero? Negative. It won't. It will not print anything. Will not it will give an error. Error. It won't give an error. It's still a valid piece of code. It will not print anything because 
this condition so zero greater than zero so what is zero greater than zero what is the what will it evaluate false, false. false. it's a false 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 okay this is false right so this thing is false so moment you see if false this will not enter the block if block so you call this you can call this if block so this is the if condition so whenever this condition is true you enter this block right and evaluate whatever is there here whenever this condition is false you don't enter this block okay so that is is this problem clear to all of you the solution to this problem yes, sir, yes. Problem? yes, yes sir. sir yes sir okay so let's now move on to the next one this is problem 2 Problem two is as follows. So accept two integers as input. Okay, print the maximum of the two. Okay, so how do we approach this? How do we? Do so we should use the Results. comparison operator, and uh, whichever is greater, actually we should print that. Okay. Right. So first we accept the input. So you accept a string as input as usual. And then convert it into an integer, right? So that is x equal to int of input of. Likewise, you have int of input of. Okay, you have accepted two numbers as two integers as input. Okay, now when x is greater than y, what can you say? Print x. Print x. Uh, print, uh, print, uh, print x. Yeah, okay. and uh, so I'll I'll write. two things two two ways of doing this right so we we'll look at uh, first i'll write something you must tell me if it is right or not okay so if x is less than y can we use elif here yeah one second yeah i'll come to it. so is this correct or not what i have written that's right yes sir yes sir it is correct are you sure yes sir This will work for every pair of integers x and y. What will be like if x is equal? No, sir. To what if both are equal? equal? Okay, let me run this and see. So you are saying what will happen when both are equal? I end up not printing anything. So why is this happening? Because we didn't make no any if statement for equal. We did not specify the equality condition. Okay, right. So how do you fix it? How do you fix it? If I just double changing. equal to y. Less. Okay, so there one way. I'll just tell you one way to fix it. Right? So if x greater than or equal to y, print x. If x less than y, print y. Is this will this fix the problem? Yes, sir. Okay, so this yeah. will fix yes, the yes, problem. Yes, sir. So no, this. Sir, this. So fix the. Yeah, this should right. So I we have ten twenty. So let's enter ten and ten. Okay, so that will that will work. So we have to try three cases, right? When they are equal, one is greater, the second one is greater. So ten, twenty, we tried already. Now let's try for twenty, ten, and just check if it works. So it works, right? So this is one way. May not be the best way of solving it, but this is one way. Okay, what is the other way? Else, you can add another else. Condition. Okay, so you you just add an else. So if x is greater than or equal to y, print x else. Print y. Y. Print y. Right. So this is this is also a valid way to write this piece of code. So you can just try it out. It will it will work. Right. So this is correct. This is the correct way of writing it. Now, what if I remove this equal to? Is does this code become wrong? No. Sir. Yes, sir. Both are equal. It will no. Be. It will not become wrong. It will not cover when both are equal. Right, sir. It will go into the else block and then. Okay, we'll, we'll go to the else. Block. Correct, right? So it's not wrong. So not okay, this is correct. No, so this is a correct way of writing it. Only thing is that equality case will be taken care of by the else part. Okay, so that's the only difference uh, between these two code blocks, right? Where does the equality case occur? So in the in this piece of code, the equality occurs here or is captured by the first in the, in the if part. In the second version, the equality is captured by the else part. 
All right. Also, is this is this clear? These three ways of writing it. Yes, sir. They are clear. Okay. Right. So let us uh, move on to. So I'll just introduce one thing to you. So you might you might be wondering uh, why we even discuss it else now. But uh, there is a function called max in Python. Okay. So that very conveniently does whatever is expected. So you accept int of input and uh, you accept y as input. And if you want to print the maximum, all that you need to do is print max of x comma y. Okay, so that will give you the maximum, no matter what your numbers are. Okay, so of course you could directly use this. So you may ask me. Why are we going this convoluted way and doing all this? But it's just to introduce if else for you, right? So if you have not done if else, if you have not written any conditional statements before, then this is a good problem to explore the idea of conditional statements. Okay, so I'm just putting it out here that you can do it using a simple max function in Python. Sir, what if we use two equal values here? What sorry? What if we use two equal values here in this last code? It will still work, right? So it will still work. Okay, sir. Okay, so that is uh, the simplest way of doing it, but maybe most Pythonic way as we call it, right? So this is a Pythonic way of doing stuff, but still not. So if we use a flo floating number. Uh, it won't work, right? So uh, the question doesn't ask for floating point numbers. It only asks for integers. If you want to do that for float, you have to convert this to float. Okay. Right? So you have to just change the input part to float of input of. Right? Sir, do we get this file which you are working on? Yeah, yeah. I'll share it at the end of every session. Uh, where it is, sir? It will be shared uh, in as a part of the calendar itself. I'll also share. I'll, I'll also be uploading it to Python portal, which I have not done for lecture one, but I'll do it from lecture two on. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, so this is the next problem. So you have to accept a word as input. If it has, if it is having a size four, right, four or less, then you have to print short. Okay, it means it's a short word. If it has between five and eight characters, where five and eight are also included, then you have to print medium. Right? It's a medium length word. If it has nine or more characters, you have to print that it's a long word. This is the problem. Okay, so first thing first, what is the first line of code going to be? Word is equal to input. Okay, word is equal to int of input of. Is that correct? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, 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 how do you get the size of the word? Length. 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 Length of word. Right. So let's call this the size size of the word. Okay. So that size of the word. Now it has less than four characters or four or less characters. Then you have to print something. Right. So if something happens, you have to print short. So what should this be? Length of word. If size is less than or equal to 4, then print short. Okay, right. So size is less than or equal to 4, you print short. Now, let's just stick to if conditions for now. And so, what is the next if condition going to be? Greater than or equal to 5. If size is. Uh, if size is, is greater than or equal to 5 than and less than or equal to 8. Okay, size is greater than or equal to five. That's one five. thing. And less than or equal to eight. And sir. And Hello, sir. less than or equal to eight. Then you print what? Medium. Long. Medium. 
medium. Medium, right? So it's medium. medium. Can we now, use along similar size lines in, in between the five and eight? I'll come to that. I'll come to that. For now, let's stick to this. Final if condition is if size greater is than equal to nine. Greater than equal to nine. Okay. So yeah, you are going to print long. Okay. So, so let's just uh, run this and see. It, it it's going to work, but like so the word need not make mm -hmm. any sense. Okay. So let me just. Okay, so this is some long word. Okay. So it prints long. Let's try it out for a five letter word A B C D E. Okay, that also works. Maybe A B C. A short. All right. This is one way of writing this. Okay, let's let's now cut to another way of writing this. So I'll delete the whole thing. Okay, so I'll introduce you to one. For those of you who don't know, I'll introduce you to what is called an if else if else ladder. Okay, so this is. This introduces the idea of what is called else if, right? So, so if size less than or equal to four, you still go ahead and print short. No change is there. Okay. Now, else if. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Sorry for interrupt. Uh, instead of colon, uh, do we use semicolon? Uh, no, no. We use colon only. Semicolon only. will not work. Oh, okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, so if size is less than or equal to four, you print short. Okay, so no change is that. Now, assume that size is now not less than or equal to four. What for whatever reason the word you have entered is bigger than or longer than a four-letter word, then what happens is you check for the next condition. The next condition asks you, is it between five and eight? Okay, so you already know that it is greater than four. Okay, so now you just check if it is less than or equal to eight, and if it is the case, you print medium. Okay, assume that this also doesn't hold good. Okay, then what is the only possibility? The size can be print long nine or higher, right? In which case you print long. Long. Okay, so I just run this and uh, show you show it to you for let's say A B C D E. Okay, so it, it works. Well, maybe a nine letter word now. A, B, C, D, E, F, T, H, I, J, K, L. Very big word. Okay, it's long. Now, this is this might be a bit hard to understand if you have not seen this before. Did, did everyone get what is happening here? Yes, sir. Sir, the yes, LF statement once more, Okay, so the LF statement is as follows, right? So, see, this is. Let's go back to the if. We have three if conditions, one after the other, right? So here, what happens is your interpreter or or whatever is running your code is going to execute the first line, going to accept a word, compute the size of the word, and then it's going to check the first if condition. Okay, and if it's true, it will go inside and print short. If not, what it will do is it will go to the next if condition, right? So whether this is Let's say size is equal to three. Okay, so size is equal to three implies it will it will print short. But then even after it has done that, it will it will anyway go and read the next if condition. Okay, it's not going to skip this if condition. All right, so every single if condition will be read here, no matter what the input is. Yes, sir. Okay, now let's come back to the if else if else block. What happens here is. <laughs> One of these three will only be executed. Okay, so if let's say size is less than or equal to four, and uh, maybe the word that we give is let's say A B C. I'll take an example. If A B C is the input, this will evaluate to true. Will go inside and print short. Okay. After that, it's going to ignore everything that comes up. Okay, so it's going to ignore. Everything that comes after it. So, moment one of these three conditions is executed, all that follows is going to be ignored. Do you yes, sir. get that? So, else if so that's what is called the if 
else if else ladder you go sequentially from top to bottom whenever a particular else if condition or if condition evaluates to true the block that is inside it is executed and then you completely exit out of it right you don't look at what is there below it you, you directly go and come to this particular line in the code okay sir okay, did everyone get this yes sir hello yes sir Hello, sir. Yeah. So actually, in the previous code, um, I mean, when when you used only if, I mean, there also, I mean, uh, only one block will be executed. Correct. There also only one block will be executed, but then it will read every single condition. It's going to it's going to evaluate each of these conditions. Whereas what I'm saying in else if is, it's not even going to evaluate. This. Okay. So okay, it is going to actually evaluate all the, I mean, blocks. The, I mean, efficient if statement, but yeah, in the every, yeah. if else only, I mean, whichever whichever is executed, I mean, it will execute that, and and then um, it it will not, I mean, evaluate the others. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, is this idea clear to everyone? If else, if else. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 So, I want to know that uh, in the second case, uh, whether the control will go to elif path or not. Whether the uh, the control whether it will go to elif uh, block or not. Yeah. It, it uh, will go to the elif block provided size is five or above, five okay. or greater than five. Okay. Sir. Okay. So, sir. Yeah. So, is there any difference between if else and elif? Okay, so there is right. So if you look at it, elif also is kind of a if, but then provided something is there before it, right? So in the case of else, you don't have any condition, right? So in the case of else, if you have a condition that will be checked. So if else is what else this is not followed by any condition. So if 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 the if part evaluates to true. Then you won't check the else part. If the if, if part evaluates to false, you check the else, right? So in the case of if else if else, what happens is if the first condition evaluates to false, then you check the second condition. If that also evaluates to false, you go and execute whatever is there inside else. Okay, so there's a difference between else and else if. The main difference is that you check for a condition in the case of else if, whereas else is Just the negation of all the first, all the conditions so far. Uh, sir, can we write many elifs inside if and like between if and else? Yeah, we can Is do it? that. Yeah, we we'll, we'll come to a question that discusses that. Okay, you'll see a question where we have to do multiple elifs. Sir, if there are only two conditions, can we use else or elif? So if there are only two conditions, so it's better to use. So if it's like a, a question that we have seen so far, right? So if you print the maximum or print positive, negative stuff like that, it's better okay. to use if else. But uh, if you have something of this kind, right? Yeah. Uh, let me just jump in and add one more question, right? So let's call this problem. What is this problem? Problem four. Excuse me, sir. Now uh, one second. I'll I'll finish that that question. Okay. So, so accept accept a uh, number uh, an integer. Okay, maybe this time float a real number. Right? Accept a real number as input. As input. If it is in the interval minus one comma zero. Let me make it open intervals in both cases. Print, let's say, let's keep it simple. Okay? Negative. If it is in the interval zero comma one, right? Zero comma one. Print. Pause. Okay, so let's try to do this. Let's try to solve this problem now. 
So, uh, how, how will we accept the input? Float input. Float. The float X is equals to float of input. Float. Okay. okay. So now, how will we write the first condition? Let's let's take the positive condition. How will we write this? X is greater, greater than, than zero and less than one. Okay. Okay. Greater than zero, less than one. We'll print positive. Positive. See, here is where it it can become tricky, right? So here you can't use else. Why can't you use else here? Because equals to zero condition is not mentioned. Right. So equal to zero and also every other interval, right? Or every real other number. Real, real number that's not in minus one zero, that will also get so three. If you pass three point five as input. That will also be called negative, right? So, okay. so this is one case where if else if or here just two if conditions will also work. But so this is wrong. We'll make sure that wrong code has to be made clear. Okay, so you could. What can you do here if x is greater than minus one and x is less than zero? Print negative. This is correct. Now you could. There's really no gain in using else if here. It's not a big deal, but you can use else if. It's, it's not incorrect. Okay. okay. So where else if could be could have been appropriate is, let's say you have a third condition which says if it is in any other interval, maybe you are asked to print the string. I don't care. Okay. If that is the case, you will add one more. And say okay. I don't care. Okay, so is that clear? Okay, so is, the, is, is this problem clear? What we have done here? Uh, why is the first one not uh, wrong code? First one is wrong. Is is incorrect because if you enter the number three point five as input, okay, that will give negative. Whereas we, the question doesn't say anything about the input three point. The interval is not different. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you're you're kind of valid. Your question is valid. So since the question doesn't say anything about three point five, it's not wrong. This code is not wrong per se. Uh, Okay, maybe this is not a correct example to demonstrate. But uh, we can say that this question wants to check whether number is positive or negative between in the range minus one to one. Ah, good point. Yeah, so we can modify the question like that, right? So uh, and check if the number is okay. So accept the range and check if okay. So I'll, I'll modify it as follows, right? If it is Outside, if the input is outside this range, outside this range, your code should not print anything. Okay, so if it is in one of these two intervals, then you have to print the appropriate value, which is positive or negative. If it is outside this range, you should not print anything. Okay, is that fair enough? So now, if you enter three point five as input. You should not get negative as the output. You should, you should get nothing, no output. So, is this modification clear to everyone what we have just done? Yes, sir. Okay. So, this one, for example, if you enter 3.5, right? That won't print anything because both these if conditions are going to evaluate to false. Yeah. Right. So, can we move on to the next problem? Yes. So, sir, can you please repeat that once again? I didn't get it. Okay. So, you are accepting a number as input. So, if it is in the interval minus one to zero, you have to print negative. Zero to one, you have to print positive. But if you enter any value that is not in one of these two intervals, right? Then you should not print anything. That's what the problem is now saying. Okay, so okay. if you print three point, if you enter three point five, according to this piece of course, three point five will count as a negative value, right? Whatever that means, which is not yes. the case, right? That should not happen. 
Yes, sir. Oh. Got it. Got it, sir. Okay. okay as we do more examples, it will become. Uh, so then, in else, yeah. we should write print empty set. Empty means keep it empty. In inverted comma. In the so else, not uh, print anything. Uh, well, then this negative interval will not work, right? So any any value that say minus point five will not give you negative. No, so last last the, the last. last one elf, uh, else 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 uh, you else, and then we can write print empty means keep it okay. empty in inverted. So, so it will not print anything or if it is. Yeah, that is correct. But this is even this is not required, right? Because if you don't. Yeah, the range is given. Yeah, so even if you enter something like say something outside the range, say something like five point five, it's not going to print anything by default. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sir, one question, sir. Yeah. Uh, before proceed, sir, uh, where uh, the um, before this uh, before problem number four, uh, the if uh, statement and uh, else if is uh, considered, no, uh, this one, uh, yeah. Uh, why this here in the uh, if and uh, this uh, size is uh, we are uh, mentioning the lower limit and the upper limit uh, here in the second line size is uh, uh, greater than or equal to 5 and size is less than or equal to 8 is medium here we are uh, saying only the uh, upper limit only else correct yeah so that's a good point so why is that happening see this in the case of this code block right uh, so here the the three if blocks are independent of each other. Okay. okay. So what happens? What happens to this if block is yeah. not going to affect in this case at least, right? So of course I may I may end up modifying some variable inside. So that is a different issue. But for this problem, right? The three if blocks have nothing to do with each other. Okay. okay? So okay. whereas in the case of if else if else, the okay. Three blocks, right? By block, I mean this is a block. This is okay. this is another block. This is the third block. Okay. okay. In this case, the three blocks are connected. So, the moment you start writing else if else, the blocks are connected. So, if this if this is true, okay, this I'm going to ignore true. else and else if and else. Okay, okay. Okay, so this is false, which means size is greater than six. So, if this is false, then I know that. Size is greater than five. Now, since size is already greater than five, it's enough if I check for size less than or equal to eight. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. So that's an important point. So you have to. Un so I could have also written more explicitly that. Okay, so maybe I can add a code in between these two, which says the following: else if size greater than equal to five and size less than or equal to eight, print medium. This also is correct. But then this is slightly less efficient because I don't need to write this line size greater than or equal to five. That's kind of okay. implicit. Okay, sir. Okay, so did everyone get this? Uh, these two points regarding the connectedness of the if else if else. Uh, else yes. is uh, connected with the previous statement. Yeah, else if so, just just as single else statement is connected with the previous if, right? So this okay. else is connected with the previous if. Likewise, okay. in the case of else if, else if is connected to the uh, to all preceding statements, right? So if you okay. have one if, then three else if, then one else, then every mm -hmm. single statement is connected to all that came before it. Okay, sir. Okay, so that is uh, that is that we are now. Let's go and look at. Sir, here, uh, when we are testing the uh, condition for uh, open interval 1 and 0, 0, 1, can we write each of using and uh, uh, if 0 less than x less than 1, sir? If? Yeah, 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 sure, yeah. We'll yeah, discuss that also. That's called chaining. So, here, there is a way to chain operator, operation. So, that's where were we? We were here, right? So, maybe we'll take this example itself. So, there is a way of writing this where you don't need to use and condition you can just replace this as zero less than x less than one print positive minus one less than x less than zero print negative okay. 
so this is called if i am not wrong it's called chaining so it's like you are adding these things in a chain so this is very reminiscent of the way you write mathematical inequalities right so you just demonstrate this with a few examples so zero less than one less than two it's a true statement and let's say minus one less than zero less than ten it's another true statement you could also do this for the reverse right so three greater than one greater than minus two okay that is also true so whenever you want to look at intervals you could use this okay this is valid okay thank you okay operator i think this is called operator chaining but please check the terminology so is everyone clear with this this is this is a short this can come in handy yes sir okay yes, so sir. let's now go to the next problem this is along similar lines this problem right so you are asked to accept three numbers as input find out the maximum among the three okay so let's make this integers or maybe real numbers let's go back to real numbers now accept three real numbers as input so i'm going to do the easy part now float input of so like unlike earlier time i'm going to accept all of them on the same line okay i can do it this way okay do you all agree that this can be done yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, what is the simplest way of doing this in Python? What What did we see before? Use max, the max, uh, max operator. So, max okay. operator to x. Max and operator. And okay. The print of max. Yeah. So you can print max. So, thankfully, this works for any number of uh, variables, right? So you can enter say one, three, and minus ten. It will work. So it will give you three point zero because it's a float. Okay. So this, this works, but let's. Yes. whole point of this is to demonstrate if else condition right so let's do it using the if else so how will you do it using if else if else so we can use nested if else statement okay how will we do that so we can do like if a is great x is greater than y then if x is great no we can do like x is greater than y and x is greater than z okay then x is the lar like largest okay. among three print all right then What else next? can we use else if, else if y is greater than x and y is greater than z then print y okay then else print z. okay Okay, so this is nearly there. There's one small. Is there any problem with this? Will it always work? No. There's one case where it may not work. Is is there a case like that or? There what is. if x is yeah, greater than y? What if x was equals to y? Okay, so give me a uh, give me three inputs where this may not work. Give me three values of x, x, y, z, where this may not work. If three, all value three, are three one four five five six three five, three five. two. If all the three are equal, okay. Let's say five five six. No, it works. Okay. Three, sir, if three, one, two, sir, if all are equal, then it won't. And work. And all values are same. Hmm. There also it will work, right? If all are if same. If any next one one number one. will come, then it will not work. Yes. If any. Negative number will come. Negative number also it seems like it's going to work, right? Sir, if x and y are equal and z is less than them. Can you try one, two, three? Five, five, four. Okay, if x and y are equal, say four. Sorry, uh, I made a I entered an empty string there. So if x and y are equal, let's say four, four. What should be the value of z? Z three. is less than them, like three Five, or two. Three, okay, two. two. Okay, so that is the only that that's one of the cases where this this will fail. So always safe to include a greater than or 
equal to right so no harm in doing that so let's let's put in the equal to and that will that will fix the problem so 442 will now work okay but let's go back and let's see exactly where it failed right so for 442 why did this fail 442 it returned 2 as the answer so can you tell me where it failed so instead of else we can use elif statement and then we can write if z is greater than y and z is greater than x then print z okay but here is another problem right now here what will happen is if you enter all three as equal numbers that won't print anything correct yes sir okay so that that problem is there if you modify this way right so what you suggested at the beginning is correct but for the equality case right so now let's go back so 442 where was it why was not giving us the correct answer if x and y are 4 what happens 4 is is, is 4 greater than 4 no, uh, no, no right no, so this, this condition is false so you'll go to the next false. condition is is 4 greater than 4 again no this no. is false no. right so it will end up printing 2 yeah. 2 yes yeah. okay so yes, i will not delete yeah. this i'll i'll delete i'll make i'll made it make a comment here this is slightly incorrect okay or maybe marginally wrong okay so small fix here is change this to be equalities okay so when it comes to the exam situation this is where most of your time may end up going right so you would have made a small mistake and then that will eat up a lot of your time so these are So always the tiny things that you have to be careful about. Okay, so is everyone clear about uh, this piece of code? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's now try yes, to sir. change yes, sir. this in, a, in the following way, right? Now, if three numbers are that, can you tell me how many ways you can arrange them? How many ways can you permute them? Six ways. Two power three. Okay, six ways, right? So, can x be less than or equal to y be less than or equal to z? Is that possible? Is this one of the orderings? Yes, sir. Okay, in yes, this case, sir. what yes, you sir. print? You print z, right? So that's the maximum. Of course, this is not very efficient, yes. but we are just looking at different ways of doing, it, right? So else if x less than or equal to z less than or equal to y you print so maybe we we'll pick it fix the maximum first that pattern will follow so y could be you can swap x and y then also you or maybe you can combine this right and z so if now we'll introduce or in this since we have not been looking at or at all right so if if it is this ordering or Ah, uh, what is this? Why less than or equal to x? Less than or equal to z? This is the only case when z will be maximum, right? Is this valid? Okay, so we can now just uh, yes, paste this. So here, what will I change? I'll change maybe uh, y and z. Make this x, and uh, this is z and y. Make this x. Okay, of course, not efficient. I just looking at different ways of writing so here why become confusing sir it becomes confusing but it also demonstrates the use of or right so that's why i'm doing it okay so this is the easiest max of x sir i can't understand this can you please repeat it yeah yeah once again i'll just complete it and then okay so what will i print here x Okay. Why? Okay. Why? okay. So let's let's Why? take the first condition. What is the first condition telling? If I have three numbers such that the first number is less than the second number is less than the third number, or second number is less than or equal to first, less than or equal to third. In both these cases, 
I have to print the maximum as the third number. Here Z is the largest one, right? Yeah, here Z is the largest one. Okay. Is the first statement clear? If the first is clear, then the rest are similar. Yes, to all are clear. You can put in a else if here because, in fact, you can remove this and change this to else, right? Will that work? Yes, yes it sir. works. Should work, right? Because here, if z is not the maximum and x is also not the maximum, then by default, y has to be the maximum. Okay, for example, if you want a concrete example, let's say the numbers are 1, 2, and 3, right? So 1, 2, and 3 comes in, which of these two conditions will evaluate to true? First part or second part? First part. First part, right? So because it's an R condition that's connecting these two, the entire thing will evaluate to true and you will print 3. Okay, so... That's one example, and for this, we can similarly come up with some other example. Instead of or, we can use and also, right? Uh, no, right? So if you use and, you will get end up with the problem. Can x be less than, if the three numbers are different, can 1 be less than 2, less than 3, and 2 be less than 1 and less than 3, will both work? So, of only one of these two will work, right? So, yes, sir. this will be false, right? Yes, so, it sir. has to be or. Hello? Yes, correct. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Sir, I have so pasted a code in the chat. Can you have a look at it? So, can you show the previous one? Previous problem. Yeah, uh, this one, how and works, sir? So, and works because you're asking if x is the largest here, right? So, when, when is x the largest number? If it's greater than or equal to y and greater than or equal to z, right? Both should be satisfied for x to be the largest number. No, yes, with the sir. example 4, 4, 2. Yeah, 4 is greater than or equal to 4. 4 is greater than or equal to 2, so 4 is the largest. That's correct? Uh, sir, I have pasted a code in the chat. Can you check it? it yeah, is that is also good. correct. Yeah, what you have written is also correct. Maybe I will add that also here. That's the uh, final way of writing this, where you, instead of using conditional operators, you just nest your if statement, right? So if x is greater than y, greater than or equal to y, then you check if x is greater than or equal to z, in which case you have to print x, x, x. right? So what is the next case? What have you written next? next? Else if y is greater than z. OK, else if y greater than or equal to z. Print y. OK, why is it enough if you check only y greater than or equal to z? Because we have already checked x equal I, x is greater than y, x. and it is false. Because else it says that the previous if block is not being followed, so hence it has been come here. Correct. Right? So this is false. That's why you even enter here. So you, you already know that x has to be less than y. No, if it's enough if you check if y greater than or equal to z, in which case you print y. Now, if that is also false, L, else print z. Else print z. Okay, so this is also a nice way of solving it. So, does, it, does everyone get this solution? Yes, sir. Okay, so this sir, is. Sir, can you please repeat why why can't we like compare y with z, y with x in the else if statement? Okay, so you have you have this first if right so remember that if else if else are all connected so let's take the case of uh, where y is maximum right so let's say one five four these are the numbers okay so x one is greater than or equal to five that is false correct this will evaluate to false 
Yes, correct. So therefore, I come directly here and I ask the question: Is phi greater than or equal to four? True. Okay, so and I print y. Now the question is: Why should I? Shouldn't I also ask if the second number is bigger than the first number? Why is it that I am only checking if second number is greater than the third number? That's because I have already checked if the first number is bigger than the second, right? Because it is false, I have come to else if part. If this were true, then I would not have come to any of this. Correct. Okay, so that's so. So shall we move to the? Excuse me, sir. I have yeah. one question. Let's yeah. say if x is greater than z, then I mean uh, the first block won't be executed. Because, yes. Uh, yes. And oh, the okay. second block also, I mean, will not be executed. Second will be executed. Will be executed. It will be right. So you're saying if x is greater than or if x is less than y. No, no. So this is this is all about x and y, right? Yes, sir. But let's say the condition is x is greater than z. I mean, I mean, it is that. Uh, let's say the x, I mean, x is first greater than z. Second block at all can execute. It's greater than y. Put in x greater than z. Second and one. Ah, correct. 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 Uh, example we can take as four, two, and one. Okay. Yeah, exactly. This is what I'm saying. So if four is greater than or equal to two, four is greater than or equal to one, you will print four, right? So what is the question? If x is, I'm sorry. I... Is is the question now sorted or confusion sorted or is that? Uh, sir, let us take one more example. Four, five, and one. Okay. So four is. In this case, code won't work. Else, if, else, this will be executed. Else, if second. So this will work, right? Print y. It will print y, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So let's. Yes, sir. Uh, let me just quickly write down what we are checking here. We are checking if in the first in the first if block, right? We are checking if x is the maximum. Okay, like there are three conditions which are possible, right? So let's list down case by case. Case one is x is maximum. Case two is y is maximum. This is case three, right? We have to see if the code works in all three cases. That's the main part, right? So let's take case one. Case one is covered by this. Is that correct? And sir, so yeah. if it is not maximum, then one is eliminated. Then we'll have to compare only two. Ah, right. So case one is taken care of by this one. Now, if y is maximum, then this will uh, not be true, right? So we'll come to else if, and this will capture y being maximum part, right? Now, if z is maximum, this no, this may or may not work. But then, ah, okay. What happens if z is maximum? Did we ever try to give an input like one? Two, five. The second if statement will be false. Okay. Last will be executed. Directly okay. it will come to the else block. By the else part. Else will be executed. Okay, so let me just. I'm still kind of uh, see. Let's say x is greater than y. Okay, so two, and I want to go to one. So two greater than or equal to one, but then. Okay, so this is wrong. This code is wrong. Do you see that? No, sir. Because what if you enter two one five? So evaluate this for two one five. In this second uh, if statement, it will come as false. So automatically, that it will come out of that loop. It will uh, go to else blocks. Yeah. No, it won't go to else. See, uh, whoever asked this question has a valid point. I don't know the name. So, see, this will fail if z is maximum, but 
So look at the input that I've given, 215, and I'm not getting any output. Oh. Do you see that? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it is second. Two one five. I think we should get the output as two. As five, right? So we should get five. The, I mean, according to the according to the code, we'll be getting as two, which is wrong. But the actual output must be five. Yeah, but no, it two won't be the output, right? So see. Yes, sir. We won't get two because after it, we are not getting any statement condition as. Okay. Sir. Got it. Yes, sir. Okay, so how do we? So I'll just now. I'll not delete this code. This is. Again, instance of a wrong code, so like stop this here. But this is a nice way of uh, checking this. So how do we fix this? Let's fix this. Fix this, sir, and then to, we need to exit loop, sir. Loop at that point. Sir, we can add another else statement and in another... the second if statement. Yes. Here, right? Else print yes, sir. sir. Okay. So let's. Uh, if x is let's again go by case by case. If x is maximum, this will anyway work. If y is maximum, then so y is maximum. What will happen? This will uh, work, right? So it will work. If z is maximum, then x greater than or equal to y may or may not succeed. So let's take two sub cases. Let's say it succeeds. So you'll go in here. You will print z, correct? If yes, x sir. greater than or equal to y doesn't succeed, then you will go here and uh, you will print z. Okay, so this works. Okay, so this is, this is does everyone get this? Why this is, the sales is needed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'll add this. Uh, the code fails for the test case 2, 1, 5. So that case three fails here. So that's what the problem is. Okay, but this is a useful code to debug. All right. So what we'll do is we have been at it for one hour. Let's just take some two to three minutes break and then we'll resume. Okay, just three minutes break and we'll come back. Excuse me, sir. It's a break for a couple of minutes.
Okay, so shall we resume? Yes, sir. Okay, so. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. Yeah. Yes. Sir, yes. I'm having one doubt in the last code. Sir, in the example, like you took like 512, right? Then, sir, in that case, if first block won't get executed and second, then why else won't get executed in that very case? Uh, which one here? This wrong code you are talking yes. about? Yes, yes, sir. Okay, so if, see, if, if you pass 2 and 5, then this is going to evaluate to true, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so the moment this this evaluates to true, no matter what happens inside, the else if and else are going to be ignored. Okay, oh, so this okay, you so have to remember okay, that this if is connected to this else if, not so this if and this else if don't have anything to do with each other. Okay, sir, got it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So there is something that is called the indentation guide that will actually help us show which if is connected to which else and all that. So we have to turn that on. You can also turn on the line numbers. Where is the line number? Show line numbers, right? So this, will, this is a useful feature to have. So it shows you which if is connected to which else, else if. So in this case, these three, so all of the statements which are on the same indentation level are connected. And these are all connected, but this has nothing to do with. Okay, so we looked at uh, multiple ways of solving, finding the maximum uh, of of these three, right? So now let's go to. Was the max operator for that? Yeah, we also saw the max. You you want you want to see that again? No, sir. Ah, okay. So I didn't hear what you said. This is what problem this is problem five, right? Now let's look at uh, problem six. Problem six is also. So, sir. Similar. Yeah. So September term, the Python playlist is not added on YouTube yet. It is added, but it is added in two as two playlists. One is called Python lectures. The other one is called uh, live coding. You should be able to find three such. Sorry, two such playlists. Okay, sir. Okay, so accept three integers as inputs. Print right if they form the sides of a right triangle and not right otherwise. That's the question. So, how do we go about it? Pythagoras. Okay, so we accept. First, we accept the inputs. Okay, input. So let me just copy this. Int of input of duplicate it two times. So there are now three. These are the three sides of the triangle. If x is equal to y square plus z square. Okay, if x square equal to y square plus z square, then what should I print? Right. 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 Else, uh, not right. Okay. So we can write a single line code. Find the largest first. So because hypotenuse can be x square or y square or z square. Yes, so yes. all the three conditions we are going to use and and then finally the or. So or and or 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 sir or okay or y square is equal to x square plus z square. Okay, can oh. I change this equal to w equal to t equal to? Will that work? No, assignment and equality operators. Okay. The square of the max between x, y, and z is the hypotenuse. Okay, so but what about the side? Hypotenuse is the longest side uh, in a triangle. Uh, yeah, you are right, but what? Uh, how will you find out what the other two are? Sir, once you so find we the can height, simply write uh, max time. of x, y, and z square is equal to uh, equal to what? <laughs> square of the sum of the other two sides. Okay, yes, what sir. are the other two sides? How will you find out max? I agree, you will be able to use max and find the hypotenuse. 
but what about the sites sir when you find the maximum then uh, you can use the uh, remaining two sites in the same if block no i i correct you you are perfectly fine but max of xyz will give you hypotenuse what about the two sites no no you, sir, not that we can check we can assign two more variables to the other two sides and then we can calculate that can be the base and the perpendicular doesn't matter sir no sir the if else approach we use for finding the maximum of three okay so some something like that we have to do right so we can't uh, get rid of that step where we find out what the two sides are correct mm -hmm. so that part yeah, we have to sir. hypotenuse perfect right you can find it using max of x y z but then we still have to find out what the other two sides are right which of these only max will not suffice sir I correct think yeah, that's the point only max will not be enough See, sometimes what happens is this first of all yeah let's complete this code so else what print not right okay so that's the sir why we use double equal to sign here okay so double equal to is checking for equality right so two double equal to two so you can't say two equal to two because it will throw error so it's a syntax error in fact right you can't use assignment so you can use this is an assignment operator you can use x equal to 2 you can assign the value of 2 to x right but you can't assign 2 to a constant right this is a literal or a constant you can't assign anything to a constant you can only assign things to a variable so you want to check equality or to use double equal yes okay so this is uh, so this is the correct code right so let's try this out for a 4 3 Five, five. Okay, so this is right. Maybe let's try this for six, three, four. Okay, not right. Okay, so see sometimes what happens is uh, if you are or conditions there are like several or or and conditions, it may go it may extend beyond the screen length, right? So the size of your screen. So you can break this into multiple lines. So if you add them, if you add them. bracket at the beginning you can add you can press and enter carriage return and move this to the next line so this makes your code slightly more readable okay and you align all the conditions in this way this is also the same piece of code only that it has been broken down into three separate lines the conditions are uh, sorry distributed across three lines So do you get this? Why we are doing this? I got it, sir. Okay. But we have to add an outer yes, bracket. Outer bracket. Yeah. So the care should be taken, right? Let's let me remove these two outer brackets and show and let's see what happens. Okay. Let me let me run this. You will get a syntax error. Okay. So if you want to move to multiple lines with multiple OR conditions or AND conditions, you have to in introduce this extra flat brackets. Okay. It has to be flat brackets and not anything else. We can use triple and... inverted commas also in place of bracket, right? That is only for strings, right? That is only for multi-line strings. You can't use uh, that here. Sir, that, that is a that is actually right? common. Yes, sir. That was used for the comments uh, code. Uh, okay, so yeah, comments or. if you want to do multi line strings right so this is uh sentence right so if you do something like this and you print a you will get something like this okay of course you can your what you're saying is but is a triple quote a comment i have never no seen... sir doc string yeah it is i uh, know it's a comment as well sir मल्टीलाइनिंग Cascading your uh, operations or your 
conditions across lines right you have to use a floor bracket all right so is this the only way of doing it or there are other ways of doing it right so you can can think so of other ways for square root what should we write sqrt and then uh, what is how do we write x is equal to square root of y square plus z square so one way to do it is to say raise it to the power half right so you can raise x square plus y square to the power 0.5 okay that is one option or writing there is a library called math right so i i if i'm not wrong there is something called square root i'm not sure yeah so there is a there is a function called sqrt in math library so i think libraries were discussed in week 2 they are they are discussed yes, sir, yes, sir. week 2 yes sir yeah so there is a library called math popular uh, built in library that python offers so that has a square root function thank you sir. so we have to import math yeah you have to import math so if you import math you can either do math dot square root of 25 okay or you can import just the function square root from math so that works as from math import sqrt and then you can use sqrt of 25 okay in the former you import the entire library the latter you import only a particular function in a library Okay, so uh, this is one way of writing it, right? So using multiple ifs. So there is one more way which uh, which will be useful later on. So I'll just introduce this to you. This this way of writing code will uh, come up handy in many cases. Okay, can all of you mute those who are not? Okay, thanks. So. i'm going to define a variable called right okay so it is initially false which means that what i'm saying is that this this triangle is not a right triangle okay if x square plus y square is say w equal to z square i change the status of right the state of right to true okay this is a kind of convoluted way of writing what we have done but i just want you to know that this is also possible else if x square plus z square is uh, w equal to y square then also i change the state of right to true else if what is the one thing that's remaining z square plus y square y square is equal to is x square x square then also right is true right so if right is true then i print right else i print not right okay so again this is unnecessarily complicated if you think about it but it's good to know that you can uh, use this additional variable called right okay in this case i am calling it right that keeps track of the state of your in some sense system right the system here is i am studying a right triangle okay and seeing if it's or i am studying a triangle and seeing if it is actually a right triangle or not right so the state of my system could either be false or true okay so to, to begin with i assume that it is false and whenever i encounter this right triangle i update the state of the system okay so this may seem like a stupid thing to do now but you will see that this idea comes in handy when we solve different problems sir uh, actually uh, can we put this right statement in the else statement uh, after the lf right equals to false else uh, which one so uh, can you put the, this for line 4 right equals to false in the else statement after line 9 uh, elif condition we can put uh, else then uh, right equals to false uh, yeah yeah that can be done yes we could do that also okay so this is clear right this solution is also clear right for everyone yes yes sir, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 
so one yes, observation is uh, i have not written if right double equal to true okay that is i hope you see that that is not needed right because right is itself either true or false right so whenever it is true i have to print right so i am not adding this extra complication that it gives me this extra complication that right double equal to true excuse me sir yeah if right means if right is true then it then this part is executed if right is false then this part is not executed right sir correct yeah okay sir thanks okay so now let's go back to the next question okay so this is going to be a slightly harder question okay so take some time to read this question what problem is it problem number 7 okay so i'll just give you some time to read this question yes sir okay so is the question at least sort of clear what what we are asking is here yes sir so i cannot understand the second line the last line contain a sentence okay the the last line contains a sentence right it, it is so for, so for example the let's say the example i've given you right so i'm entering the line so the word good in the first line and evil in the second line and versus the third line okay so these are three words and then i also enter a sentence called so that that reads as good versus evil okay so what you have to do is you have to tell me if i can form the sentence by stitching together these three words so for example here i can form the sentence because i can take up this word good i can add one space and then i can add add the third word and then i can add a space and then add the second word so by doing this i can get the sentence from the three words if you can do it you can do this operation then it means the three words can be stitched into a sentence if you can't do this so a different example will be say something like uh, good good uh, anything let's say i just change this to good bad evil yeah, good bad evil good bad evil and the sentence remains the same now i can't stitch the three words and make it into the sentence okay so you have to print cannot be stitched this is the problem excuse me sir was should be uh, i mean in the sentence was, so we can was? use mem membership operator and then we can Go ahead, yeah. Oh, yeah. One second. We'll come to the solution. I just want everyone to tell me if you have understood the problem. Sir, how can we know that which word after which word becomes the sentence? Ah, oh, that is up to you to figure out, right? So that is up to you to figure out. But all that if, we if it is from the input from the user, then yeah, input will be from the user, right? So you won't know what the input is. You have to assume that they are all variables and go ahead. the order doesn't matter right order on the sentence matters okay it should make sense no the words need not make sense but for example here the order is jumbled right so good evil versus is the order you have, you got it in but then you have to shuffle good evil and versus to get the sentence 
that means it's, the word should it be it could it could also be versus good evil right there. So the sentence could be that yeah In short, we are checking that the word should be in e sentence. Mm, yes. So, but here is a caution, right? So, the note, a word is just a collection of alphabets. So, the word need not be from a dictionary. It could be like anything, any any string of alphabets, right? So, that is up to you. Right? No, no way. I'm assuming that you ever understood the question. Now, tell me what will be the first first few lines of code. Word underscore one is input. Sir, taking four input from also. Okay, so word underscore one is input. So let's uh, I'll I'll accept this in the same line. So I'll accept all the words in the same line. Right? So word one, word two, word three are on the on the first line uh, together and sentence. Right? I'll call this sentence. Okay, so I have accepted four inputs now. Okay, what next? Uh, sir, we can like, use uh, in operator connected by and. Yes. Uh, so okay. we can use uh, word one uh, in sentence and word two in sentence and word three in in sentence. Means word one in sentence and and yeah word two. Word two in sentence. And then word word three. Okay, again, as, as before, I'll just break this up into two lines, three lines, so that it uh, looks neater. So notice that I have added one extra flower brackets, right? And aligned. Okay. So if this is the case, what should I do? Uh, can, can be stitched. Can be stitched. Okay, else? Else cannot be, cannot, cannot, be. Cannot, cannot be stitched. Okay. Okay. Now comes the question. Is this correct? No. Sir, what is the meaning of word one in sentence? What does it mean? I mean. Okay. So this we discussed last week, right? So if you have a string that's of the form, say good, uh, or or let's say uh, great, okay, and you have another string that's at. So is at a part of great? Yes, sir. Okay, so this yes, will return true. Okay, likewise, uh, if you enter something like fact, right? is fact in great? False. False, right? So that's all False. that is doing. So whenever the first string is a substring or is contained in the second string, it will evaluate to true. So we are asking if word one is there in the sentence and the word two is there in the sentence and word three. So are all the three words there in the sentence? Then you are printing can be stitched. So this seems correct, right? What is wrong with Sir, can you show the question input? once? I mean, sentence should be uh, so like word one plus word two plus word three. Okay, so I asked you, right? So whether the question is clear? It's not clear still. Sir, so we have two forms. No, sir. Yes, sir. One doubting question. Now, sir. input will be only words, right? Okay, so see, there are four inputs in the question. First three inputs are words. The last input is a sentence. Okay, so the sentence is also an input. So we have to check if the words are in the sentence. That's all. We have to check oh, if the words no, can be it, combined to form the sentence. Okay. Okay, so the sentence is as follows. Right? And sentence the possibility of this, uh, like, it's quite low. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, this input as sentence as for input will not make any difference in this. Sir. The input of sentence? As a for input, fourth input, sir. Uh, so. uh, we have to accept the fourth input, right? That is the sentence. Uh, so there are four inputs as mentioned. First, uh, uh, the sentence should be there to check it, or first words should be there to make the sentence? First the word, right? First, first the word should be there. Okay, sir. Okay, now that everyone has understood the problem, is the solution correct or not? No, sir. Uh, sir I think no, it's, sir, not it's, correct, not, sir. it's correct, uh, sir. It's not sir, correct, sir. If the fourth sentence is given without spaces, then also it will print. No, no, I assume, no, no. So that uh, is. Yes, sir, it's correct. Sir, it even uh, we can we can take some case where uh, suppose a word is 
uh, a m and uh, the second word is a m t right uh, okay you are telling me an input so i'll i'll enter it so you are telling me first word is a m yeah okay second word is uh, let's say a m t a m t okay yeah sir suppose the first word is not a m the only uh, wo uh, that word is a m t okay okay let it be sir uh, then third uh, the third word uh, we can take anything king okay king okay what is the yeah. sentence and i am king sentence yeah i am king i am king okay yeah sir, yes. sir uh, let's uh, let's erase that uh, first word okay. am we can take uh, another uh... okay i have to start again so tell me the three words so decide what the three words are and tell me them sir um Okay. Okay. So one second. Let's first try it out for this. Sir, powerful words. Sir, right, so let's uh, try this for good evil yeah. versus, and let's see if it works. Say right? good evil versus, and the statement line sentence is good versus evil. So what will happen here? Will it print? Can be stitched or? It will print. Can be stitched. Okay. Uh, so it works for this. Now, where? Show me. Something where it will want. Sir, not, uh, sir, sir, I have sir. assumed a case where uh, suppose uh, where one of the word is a m, right? But in the sentence uh, a m is not present, but a m t is present. Okay, you have in to give me a concrete case. Yes, right? uh, sir, please take yeah. the example. Sir, please take an example. The first exam uh, word will be an. A n is it? Yes, yes, a n. Okay. Uh, we can uh, take repetition also. So please take the second word also to be as an. Okay. Yeah, third word third... as A L K. A A L K. L K. Okay. Okay. And the fourth sentence is ant can walk. And ant ant a n t ant. Oh, you can a. take ant also. Can. Uh, okay. Walk. W In that case, it will also return can be stitched. Okay. So this is clearly wrong, right? So why is this? So why did this print can be stitched? Sir, because a n uh, is there, uh, a n is the part of uh, sentence of uh, one, two, three. First word of slicing that. that uh, okay, a n is there in a n t, so therefore yeah. this return true. Okay, a n again is there. A l k, a l k was there in walk. Walk. Okay, so it was there. So word one, word two, word three, all three were there in the sentence. Therefore, we said can be stitched. However, you can't stitch this. You can't stick yes, these three to form the sentence, right? So this is a good example of of uh, a counter. This will not work, sir. The alternative way is uh, we can say word one is equal to equal to uh, uh, sentence of zero, or uh, word one is so, equal to equal to sentence of uh, two. Just like that, we can do it. But what no. is sentence of? So we can compare the length. Like we can add all three words, and if it's saying that the like if in okay, the if uh, statement we can compare the length, and if the length is same, then the, it can be stitched, and there now there are no. Okay, fine. Yeah, that's not a length, but plus two. Okay, length. Oh, yes, so do we replace everything and just look at the length? No, sir. No, sir. Along, that was sir, along with the if statement, we can add another constraint to check for the length. Okay. So how sir, length, length, the length, length will also not work. Word one plus word two plus word three plus two. Yeah. Okay, yeah. length of word one plus length of word two plus, plus length, length of, of word three plus two plus two equal to double equal, equal to equal to length of sentence. Okay. So are that. Uh, So let me run this. Sir, E will come in sentence. Sir, sentence. Sentence. Ah, uh, why, sir? Stop this. Okay, are there the 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 brackets matched here? So this is matched with this match with this. Okay, so let's run this, and let's try out and and. Sir. Ah, uh, one second. I'll just run this and we'll test this. Single K and can walk. Cannot be stitched. So this seems to work. So is this correct now? Yes, sir. There is one more problem, sir. Okay. If we uh, repeat two words, 
like uh, if it is good evil versus uh, i mean good versus evil is the sentence but the words we are entering is good good and versus please okay, try good. that sir. good good and versus the sentence is good versus evil okay this seems interesting okay that's a very good test case so this is also wrong okay so this is the counter example so this is also wrong this code is also wrong so let's uh, let me add that here so can okay. you please explain line 7 can you please repeat sir uh, line number 7 uh, sorry line number 8 line number 8 yeah so line number 8 is what see there are you have, you already checked if the three words are in the sentence then what are you checking you are checking if the length of the sentence is the same as the length of the words plus the two spaces right so there are two spaces right so though they count for two characters and then the three words count for whatever their lengths are some of their lengths so this this sum should be equal to the length of the entire sentence right that's one condition so yeah got it okay but this also doesn't work why 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 didn't it work here <coughs> sir because the input sir, because the length of the input is equal first word then second word with the same instead i mean in the sentence the arrangement is different correct right? so good and evil happen to have the same number of letters right and uh, so that we are caught there so this is also wrong so what is the last sort so we can add it equal to word 2 not equal to word 3 okay we can edit this code only okay how do you want me to edit it so after the len function in the if condition we can add the conditions like using the slicing for example if 0 to 1 slicing of the string of the sentences is double equal to word 1 or word 2 or word 3 if all one of the three conditions would be true then it would be hmm okay so what you are suggesting is i have to check for every possible permutation of the words yes sir sir yes. instead we could do word 1 all the six cases maybe not we can equal enter. to word 2 not equal to word 3 okay you are saying i can add one more line which says the words are not equal basically but i can't uh, There is no restriction on the input, right? The sentence could have yeah. equal words, right? Yeah. So we can no check rest. with all the six cases of word one, word two, word three possibilities that can be there to form the sentence. Maybe. Okay, that's that's right. So that's what that is like full proof, right? No, nothing can beat that. So that's what we are going to do. So let's try that out. So that will certainly work, right? So I'll define a variable called space that will just hold space. Okay, so now there are what six permutations, right? So word one plus space plus word two plus space plus word three, correct? So this is one possibility. Okay, so this if this is double equal to sentence, what I'm going to do is I'm going to maintain the state of the system. Okay, I'm going to say that this. Uh, So I call it stitch, right? I can't stitch them currently, but if they are equal, then I can stitch them. So I change this to true. Now I repeat this. So word one, I can just change this to word three, word two. Right? So that is the second possibility. Are there any other possibilities where word one is the is the first word? No, sir. Right. So this becomes word two, word one, word three, and. Uh, This becomes word two, word three, word one, okay, and finally we have line number eleven. It is going to be word two, 11. three, and one. Sir. Okay, yeah. Thanks. Okay, this is the last last uh, permutation. So what will this be? Word three, word two, word one, okay? two and one. Okay, now we have covered the whole thing. So if stitch, then print can be stitched. 
Okay, is there any way this will go wrong? No. No, sir. Hopefully not. Eh? So let's try good, good. Uh, versus. Okay, so this is this will say cannot be stitched. Yeah. Oh, we can. We can also try other variations, but. Um, sir, uh, since Python is uh, case sensitive, so what if the sentence we are using all capital letters? Okay, so have you been, uh, have you covered that? We have covered that, uh, but we have not yet looked at it. There is something called uh, lower form. Right? Lower so case and upper case. Yeah, so Python has this option called uh, lower, right? Any string that you give, there is a string method. It's called a method of a string called lower that will convert um, this to lowercase. Likewise, you have something called upper that will convert this to uppercase. Okay, so not just single character. So you could have a mix of both. So for example, something like right. So if you convert this to lower, every single character will get converted to lower. Yes, sir. Sir. Yeah. Sir, why that word one not equal to word two approach work? So, see, how many will you keep testing? Why should word one not be equal to word two? So, word one can be equal to word two, right? I the input doesn't say that word should be distinct. There is no condition in the question that says that each word has to be different from the other two words, right? Right, sir. Okay, so that's why we have this. So is this clear? This particular uh, problem? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so what yes. is what did this demonstrate? It demonstrated the fact that your first solution has to be refined, right? So this is wrong, but it's not wrong in a big way. It's wrong in a slightly small way, and then you try to fix it by adding the length, which is again a very interesting idea, right? So that's the right idea, but then. That also had problems. Therefore, you had to come to this exhaustive search, right? Looking for all possible combination of the three words. Okay, so expect something like this to happen when you're solving uh, problems. Sir, can we use lists? You can, right? So if you know, you can. But uh, in case you don't, then. Right. Okay, so now uh, what I'll do is I will. Start. We have 15 more minutes. So what we'll do is we'll quickly discuss loops. Okay. So even though loops are going to be introduced in the next week only, week three, let's very quickly do at least for 15 to 20 minutes. We'll do uh, loops for a bit. Okay. So sir, sir kindly so, provide the notes of the session. Yeah. So I I'll upload them. Right. So as I said, I'll. Sir? I have a doubt in lecture. OK, so can we postpone this to the end? Because I just want to okay, sir. finish the discussion on loops, and then I'll get back. OK, so again, let's do it as a, as a question, right? So the question is this. So is this sir, uh, a mock test is organized by Sir, IIT Madras for Python. Sir, what is the motive of that uh, mock test? So that is for the remedial session, not for you guys, I think. Sir, oh. is the score of that mock test will count or? Oh, OK, OK. You are asking about timed mock, right? Timed mock. No, sir. Uh, I already have submitted the mock test. Yeah. But, uh... Uh, sir, what, uh, what was the purpose of that mock test? Is it important or? Is... Yeah, it is important. Uh -huh. It is important. Please refer to the grading document no, for the exact reason for the time mock, what you should do, and all that. Yes. Okay. The so grading document has it. So you have to get some, I don't know, 50%. I don't know the exact numbers. Out of 10 timed mocks, you have to get some percentage to qualify for OPP2, second OPP. So that's some requirement is there. OK, so print the first 10 
integers k okay, one number on each okay so we are the naive way of doing this is k one print one print two so on right so that's the naive way of doing it dot 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 till print ten so that's why we have loops right we don't want to do things repet repetitively right so we want to there is something that's going that can be automated we have to automate right so loops are central to any programming language so this is a syntax okay so for this is a for loop right in ct you have learned about for each this is similar to that so for x in the range of so like i'll just add this as i'll make it more explicit so print the integers 0 to 10 right one number on each line so i have to print 0 first so i add 0 here so this range is a function in here. range is a function in python it works slightly peculiarly so what it does is the end point is should be one more than what you have here right so here you want to print till 10 the end, end point, point is excluded one more than 10 okay so if you have that and you add print x that's going to print 0 1 2 3 all the way till 10 so this is the basic syntax of a for loop so is this clear to everyone Sir, what is yes, sir. Short, shorthand, uh, yes, sir. For, for sir, we can print the star pattern with this range. Also. Ah, exactly. Yeah, you can print the star pattern, right? So let's do that next. You can do the. Uh, so if you want to print this pattern, right? The pattern that is star, uh, say hash. You want to print a bunch of hash. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's say you want to print this. What you can do is for x in range of you start from one. You want to print only one hash you know, on the first line, and you want to print five hashes, right? So where should you so go? We are to six. Six. six, right? Yes. So interesting thing is uh, we have I don't know if you have looked at this, but you can multiply strings. Did we look at it last time? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, so we can multiply strings. So if you want to multiply this by five this is all you need to do right so hash into what should i add here x x right so this is our hash pattern right so you are printing it that many number of times sir can you please repeat this line number two okay so see can we print the hashtag from the opposite from the decreasing to increasing decreasing. yeah that also can be done yeah but we'll first do this so hash into five you understood right yes, yes. Sir. okay so what this will do is when you go inside this loop first time it will take the value one so it will print hash into one so what is hash into one just hash so next time it goes x will be two so it will print two times hash, hash. Yeah. And then it will keep going on until it prints five times the hash. Yeah, yeah, got it. So we don't have to mention after print uh, x is equal to x plus one. No, okay. that will take care of. Will take care of it. Yeah. So the, the the range for this this for so this x is x here is called a loop variable, right? So x is called a loop variable. So what you are doing is you are iterating over a particular range. Right, so this this entire thing, what it does is it goes over this range from one to six. Range means literally range. Right, you start from one, go all the way till five, and the for x in range of one comma six will take care of the iteration part. Okay, so that is the basic idea of of a loop. So now let's look at some more examples so okay so this is another problem very simple problem like the previous one sir how can we print the decreasing to increasing 
Uh, yeah, I'll come to that. So we'll we'll do some slightly simpler problems and then go that. Print all numbers that are print all. Uh, so what do we have here? I have some functionality configured. I'll take that. Okay, so print all multiples of two that are greater than zero and less than or equal to twenty. So slightly more complicated. So first, so we can check here, like if x mod two equal to zero, then right, yeah. So that's what we'll do. So what should in what range should I operate? So zero, zero to twenty one. Okay, zero to twenty one. Okay, what should I check? X modulus okay, x equals to zero. Mod Two is no, double equal to zero. zero. Multiple of two. Is it possible like we are taking from zero to uh, ten and uh, zero to eleven? Yeah, zero to eleven, then uh, x into two. Correct. Into that two. that will also work, right? So that is also correct. So this is the reason we are doing this is to demonstrate how you can have if conditions inside loops. Okay, so this also is correct. Zero to eleven. We are going to take from one, I think, greater than uh, zero is there. So zero. Uh, can we can we can also yeah. do one more thing, like uh, just giving an example. Like, can we do slicing along with step function? Slicing along with ah yeah, that is also possible. But let's go go to that after a while, right? So range okay. can also be. You can also add a step size in range, but let's. Go to that after some more examples. Thank you. So this is clear, right? So this is adding an if condition inside a loop that is possible. So is everyone clear with that? How this works? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, so the yes. indentation has to be taken care of, right? So this there are now two levels of indentation, right? One after one for the for. Everything that is within the for will get executed, right? So that is uh, one question. So let's take up this one. This is not too hard, but this is what we have to do now. What do we do? So we can use if statement in this case as well. Okay. If x mod four equal double equal to zero or x mod six double equal to zero, then okay. Yeah. So for x in range of what what to what? So zero, so zero to one zero, zero one. To 100, one, one zero. Zero. Okay. If x mod four is double equal to zero. Four or four is zero and four. Is equal to zero, then print, print. print x. Okay. So can you tell me what will get printed? First few numbers. So zero Multiples of four and six. Twenty-four. Okay, okay. zero, four, six, eight, twelve, sixteen, eighteen, all these. So all the way till hundred. So that is the four. Okay, now let's let's go to the one of the most commonly appearing questions, right? So prime number finding if a number is prime or not. Is the tutorial is there already, but anyway, I'll discuss this because it's a classic use of for loops, right? So you have to check if a simple check if a number is prime or not. Okay, that's all. Okay. So, what is mathematically what is a prime number? A number divisible by one or itself divisible by one and itself. Okay, so divisible by one, one and itself. Okay, no. Let's say I let's say the number I want to check is in. Abe, oh, hey. Like, yeah. Okay, so now you have to tell me how to proceed. Sir, we can. Or I in range two to n. 
it mm-hmm. will uh, go in the loop where we can check the for... modulus till n minus 1 uh, no no till n so we can Shut check on. if x mod 1 or x mod x is equal to ah uh, yeah x mod 2 1 and x mod to, is equal to 0 then that will be a prime number okay x mod n or n mod x n mod n, n, mod n. n. Oh, sir, x, sir, x mod x. Okay, what is x here? No, n mod n. N mod n. Sir, if we have so to check, n mod n. Multiple numbers. Okay, so. So we can have a for loop and then, like for i in range two to n, and then check for every number. Okay, if for x in range two to n, what should I do? n if n. N mod n. Modulus x is zero. N mod x. Is equal to equal to zero. Okay, what happens then? Then, then it's not a prime number. No, sir, sir. Then it's not a prime number. If n mod one is equals to zero and n mod n is equals to zero, both the conditions are true. Then it is going to be a prime number. I don't think we'll be requiring for in this. So we require only two factors are there. Okay, so there are like many answers. They're conflicting, conflicting each other, right? So uh, we can use not equal to. So, Sir, uh, here uh, this is uh, till this point it is correct, I think. So if uh, this if condition will satisfy, you can print it is not a prime number. Okay. So, so remember, I I need to print only once. So, yes, sir. Uh, then not. So, so we can have some kind of variable that will keep track of it. Okay, so we we'll have a variable that keeps track of this. So I will call this variable the state, right? So, or I will call this variable is prime. So initially, what I will say is the number is false, true. So we will keep false. true, and then in the if statement, we will say it's false. Oh yeah. True. Oh. Then it will become false. And true. Break. So uh, no, we will come to the that part later. So okay. others may not know. So. Now, once I come out of the loop, what should I do? It should print uh, prime is prime. Is prime. Is prime. Is prime. Isn't prime. Else not prime. Okay. So, how many of you agree that this is correct? Sir, I agree that this is correct. Sir, I also agree it's correct. Okay. Me how many too. of you think? So, how many of you Sir, didn't understand? Any part of this code? Sir, I can't understand. Sir, me, From line number five, can you please explain? Okay. So what sir, we do? Sir, this will is... not work for uh, zero and one, right? Zero is anyway not. So assume that you are not going to give zero as input and uh, one. Yeah, one we have to explicitly check. So assume that it's greater than or equal to two, right? So those are anyway not very important numbers. Let's look at this only from two. So what I'll do is I'll Excuse go me. and. Uh, once again, I'll, I'll write a simpler code and then get back to this. Right, so this is perfectly valid, but I'll use this fact, okay, and uh, do the following. So I'm now going to count something. What do you think I can count? What is a good thing to count here? The number of factors. Number of factors. Okay, the number of factors. Right, that's a good. That's a good answer. So number of factors I want to count. So, tell me how I count. I'm, I'm, I'll count that. So for f, I'll, I'll call the loop variable f here. For f in range of, from where should I start? If I want to count zero factors, to n. can zero be a factor? One. Two to n. One, one, one to n. One, 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 one to nine. So one, one to n, n, sir. One to n. Okay. Should it be n? Should I stop at n minus n? N plus one. n plus 1 n plus 1 right so i am going to start from 1 and go all the way till n right so therefore i need n plus 1 is this clear to all of you just the for loop yes sir yes so yes. no, if yes. when is some when is f a factor of n if n mod f is 0 okay if n mod f is double equal to 0 then n is divisible by f or f is a factor of n so what should i do increase count plus to count plus 1 Okay, so I I just do this for all the factors of all possible factors of n, right? So I accept input first. I do this for all factors. Now outside the loop, what should I check? If the number of factors is more than two, if 
count is equal to 1 count is equal to what can i say about the number prime okay so is this code correct yes yes, yes. let's run it for yes. numbers from 2 all the way till say 2 and 3 works what about 17 4? four is not prime 17 is prime right so tell me some very excuse me sir right. uh, one second i just run this for one more case and then 131 so 157 okay 97 is it prime or not Okay, the program returns Sir, prime. Therefore, Sir, one fifty. Okay, one fifty. Last. Okay, right. So it is. This seems to work. Right now, is everyone clear about this code? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Can you explain it again? Okay, so which part is not clear? Sir, this four X in range. Sir, some third line. Okay, the count is zero. So you are counting the number of factors. So. So let's take an example, right? So when I what happened? Okay. So when I say when I pass n equal to five, what we are going to check is so range of this will be range of what one comma six, right? So range of one comma six is actually this sequence one two three four five. Okay. So for f in range of one comma n plus one means f will take the values. One, two, three, four, five in succession. In each iteration of the loop, f will take one of these values, and it will take it in the sequence. First, f will be one, then it will be three, four, five. So, what are you asking here? Is five divisible by f? Correct. So, you are asking if five is divisible by f. If it is, then f is a factor of y, correct? So you are adding, incrementing the value of count. You are counting the number of factors. What is f here, sir? F is one of these five numbers, right? So f is what is the loop variable, right? What is called the loop variable? Iterator. Yeah. So if you go back here, you used x, sir? right? X is now replaced by f. in previous question uh, in this why did we did n plus 1 ah because see what are the factors of a number n what, like two two factors that you certainly know let's take 5 if n equal to 5 can you tell me what are its factors 1 and 5 right so yes sir so i need to go till 5 so i need to go till 5 so The range function stops at this, the the second value minus one, right? So if I say range of one comma four, sorry one comma five, it will only check for one two three four. It will miss out on five. Okay, but I want five to be a part of my list of factors. Therefore, I go till six or n plus one. So is this part clear to everyone? What we have done? Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, why we wrote count is equal to two? Okay. So prime number twelve. Yeah. So that is because a prime number has exactly two factors. In fact, not just that. Every number which has only two factors is a prime number. Yes, sir. Right. So therefore, the way to check if a number is prime is to count its factors. And check if they are two. Okay, okay the number... I got it, sir. Got yeah. it. Okay, any other questions regarding this solution? Uh, sir, uh, I have written a small piece of code without using count and for using only if. Can we please check it once? Ah, uh, okay, but that is not going to work, right? If so, you are basically you are checking yes. if. Yeah, I have sent that in the chat, sir. Okay, if there your... are more factors, then then it will not work. Yeah, so you just run your code with say ten, right? So let's run it with ten, and so tell me what your output is. Sorry, ten will 
uh, yeah 10 it's working sir for 10 it's giving you prime or a not prime not prime how is that so okay let me run your code your this is okay you copied your code this is your code right yes sir run it giving me prime prime yeah. see this will print prime right so for example okay got it if we are skipping out the factor five yes sir understood right. so hence the loop is needed right so yes 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 sir okay any questions on this method of counting sorry of uh, taking prime primality by counting the factors did everyone get this part? Yes, sir. It's clear. Okay, then we go to this one, right? The the second solution. Where this is what we saw first, right? Now, now start at this and tell me if this is also clear or sir, uh, can we add SQRT like can the range function range function run from two to SQRT and mm, yeah, that is yeah, that will work. Will it but... not? Yeah, that, that should work. So yeah. It will reduce the number of computations. Right? Correct, yeah. Okay, is this uh, anyone having a problem with this way of writing the primality check? Mm -hmm. So in uh, line 5, uh, if we give the value of n as 2, so, so how will the for loop run? Like from 2 to 2, how will it run? Uh, good point. So that's called uh, an empty sequence, right? So if you try out this is not this is not throw an error. This is what is called an empty sequence. So for example, for x in range of so let me just ask you this question, right? So for x in range of two comma three, if you try to print x, what will you get? Two. Just two, right? You will just get two. Now yes. if you change this as two, it will not print anything because the sequence is empty. Okay, so yeah. that is the definition. By definition, it's going to be empty. This will be just empty sequence or empty range. And so in the above quote, if we give the value of n as 2, will it work? It will work, right? So if you give n as 2, you will no not even enter this loop. Correct? Yes, sir. Sir, in this code, okay. if we yes, enter... Understood. Sir, in this code, if I enter 1, it is giving prime, sir. Correct, correct. Yeah, as sir. I told before, this will not work for 1 and below. But if you are checking if a number is prime, usually you will start with 2, right? So I am taking that liberty. So if you want to verify yes, that uh, for n, you have to add an extra condition and say that n double equal to 1, not prime, all that you have to do. But yeah, any other questions yes. regarding this code? No, sir. So, sir, let's say we have integers. Uh, how will that work? Uh, like a negative in numbers? Uh, no, assume that negative is not going to be. Okay. Sir, if we enter 1, will the range 2, 1 throw an error? Okay, so this I have not. I think that's also an empty, empty sequence. So it should not throw an error. Okay, so if you try to iterate through this, you will not get anything. This is similar to range of 2, 2, right? So that won't throw an error, but it will print 1 as a prime. Oh, yes, sir. That's the problem, yeah. So for now, don't worry about negative numbers and in 1. So for this code, uh, where are we checking for if it is uh, divisible by uh, itself and if it is divisible by 1? Okay, good point. So that we are not checking. So what we are doing is, this is a slightly different approach to the primality problem, right? So a prime is it's a number that is divisible by one and itself. Therefore, it follows that it is not divisible by anything between two and n minus one. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is what we are checking here. If it is divisible by anything in the range 2 to n minus 1, this range is what? Range of 2, comma n is actually 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 till n minus 1. 
so if it is a prime number none of these should be a factor okay sir got it okay, so that's what we are checking so this is in some sense ulta of what we did here right here we only checked for 1 and n here we are checking for 2 and n minus 1 2 to n minus 1 right okay. sir right okay any any questions i think we can so we have done a bit of conditional statements today and yeah maybe this inverse for loop uh, sorry the, this pattern right we we'll just print a different pattern here and we'll stop with that so uh, sir where this document will be saved so i will certainly add it to the calendar but uh, i will also add it on the portal i need to know i need to like configure that i'll add it and send out a mail okay for okay. now you can find it here so the calendar will have the link so can you also share the first uh, yeah plus first one is there in the first uh, last week's calendar uh, so i checked till i didn't find any that's why okay so it should be there uh, can you it is not there sir is it so 25th right last time this is 25th yes, so see i'm looking at 25th uh, sir. sir sir i have one general doubt not uh, related to the videos whichever is getting uploaded okay weekly videos and the concepts what is given in the videos and the questions what they are asking is somewhere not related i mean the questions are little more deeper than the videos which they release so is it mandatory i should attend all these classes it is not mandatory that you have to attend these classes but uh, see python is a subject where there is lot of scope for exploration okay so that's why the questions that we ask are not exactly aligned to the videos if that is the case it actually it's not aligned to <laughs> uh i what is that uh, well well it, it is it is it is not meeting the expectations uh See, no there no. are there are there are admissions happening for working professional like us okay we are depending on those videos very badly and if the if the questions are not aligned to that then it's no no way we can able to answer any of the questions uh, i slightly disagree here right so python as i said is the way you approach python has to be different i agree if you say this for max 1 max 2 got it right but python it's very easy to learn python by not even watching videos right not even attending these sessions that's because of the nature of the subject right so see every single code in your practice assignment you can run it and see what the output is and just by executing things you can learn right so that's something that's expected of you so i'm sorry i have a slightly different opinion on this okay okay but uh, if you have any questions you can feel free to attend this session we'll try to so i can't the... able to open the collab link of first session do you have uh, are you trying from your student id or yes i'm trying with my student id but i can't able to so okay so i maybe some access permission i have to change i'll look into that i am able to access sir okay mm, i am not sure i'll have to check okay so let's just finish this one pattern and, and then we could not able to access collab uh, you are not able to access many of you are not able to access no sir in my case they are uh, it shows no preview available mm, okay let me same with me same error is coming okay i'll have to check that so are you by any chance are you uh, what is your roll number can you just uh, paste it in the chat now i am able to open it Okay. Two, three times if we try, then it loads. It seems. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, let's quickly finish this. So how do we print this pattern? Where? What is the approach? So first we Same will print from spaces. Same from X in range. Um. 
sir so first we'll print spaces and then hash okay we'll print spaces and then hash okay so let me just start with for x in range of okay, 5 6 or 1 to 1 to 6 okay i want to print five lines right so i want to print five lines with this pattern now first line should have how many spaces four Okay, it should have four spaces, but how do I express that in terms of x? Sir, so I think it needs uh, an six extra minus root eight. as well. Sorry? Six minus six into okay. space. Is this is six minus x or five minus x? 5 minus 6. Uh, yeah, yeah. 5 minus, five minus 6. Five minus 6, right? So 5 minus x into into what? Into space plus uh, that has. Okay. Uh, how many hashes should I add here? Uh, okay. hash so into x, x into x. Into, yeah, x into. Okay. So this is the string I want to print. Like, I'll just write it down and I'll, I'll like express it as two lines of code. Okay. So. Okay, so did everyone get this? What we have done here? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is uh... no, sir. I don't get line number okay. two. So we are we are splitting this into two parts, right? So spaces, hashes. In the first line, do you see that there are four spaces? Yes. In every subsequent line, the number of spaces decreases by one, right? So you start with four, then three. Then two, one, zero. Right. So there is one sequence that goes as for spaces. It goes as four, three, two, one, zero. For hashes, right? It goes as one, two, three, four, five. Correct. So how do you express this in terms of x? So x, x itself goes from what to what? One, two, three, four, five. Now you compare, right? So you have to, you have as many hashes as there are these x values, right? So if you you make x into hash. So is that part clear? X into hash, how it came? Yes. Okay. Now you want to look at the hash spaces, right? So spaces are given by, so the relationship should be clear now. Four is five minus one. 3 is 5 minus 2, therefore you can conclude that this is 5 minus x. If you want to still reduce it, you can look at this is space is equal to 5 minus x into space. This is x into hash and your string, the pattern you want to print is spaces plus hash. Okay, is that clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so yes. we'll stop at this stage. Sir, I have a doubt in lecture 2.7. Like, I'm not able to understand that. Okay, what is that uh, question? That is something uh, like we are related It is to about space. cipher. Ah, uh, cipher, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, what is it about that cipher? Sir, I'm not able to understand what sir is coding for cipher. Okay, I need to look at that particular lecture. So this is some substitution. Characters, uh, character is different. The next, they move to the next character. It's like that way it's coded. If it is a string, each character they pick up each character and they move on to the ne next character. See, if it is A in the original string, it will be B in the printed string. It will be B. It is it showing B in the print. Yes. Is it that abracadabra question? Alpha. Yeah, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I think it's the like uh, if we have A to Z the string, then uh, if it is twenty sixth one, uh, as we start with zero to twenty. So they are talking about Caesar cipher. Okay, the substitution cipher, right? Caesar cipher. That's the one. Yeah, Caesar yes, cipher. 
ओके सो आई डोंट रिमेंबर एग्जैक्टली सो इट्स लाइक अ शिफ्ट शिफ्ट बाय सेट नंबर ऑफ कैरेक्टर्स राइट शिफ्टिंग अ कैरेक्टर बाय द इंडेक्स ओके सो ओके यू हैव दिस नो ओके नो यू वांट टू एक्सप्रेस अ पर्टिकुलर वर्ड इन टर्म्स ऑफ you want to encode a we word we have a like we, we have, have a word, word and apple, we have and we will shift it to alphabets like a a will become c and p will become r like this like we have a word and then we will shift each letter of the word two digits up front from a b c d okay yeah. like so, apple will become c uh, c r r something okay so you uh, you have word let's say p a i r right so you want to now encode it and uh, by then you want to shift it by let's say 3 so you want to so p shifted by 3 units so it becomes q r q r s yes. yes, right so is that the one you are talking about so p a r becomes yes, yes sir okay so p becomes s a becomes d right yes sir i becomes what j k l and r yes. becomes stu so you want to write a code that will do given uh, yes, uh, yeah so find out what is the encoding okay so yeah let's do this maybe this is the last question okay so how do we do this so we can get the ordinal value and uh, plus uh, shift okay so let's take so we can iterate through strings so maybe that is again something that we have not yet done so for sir sir has used only strings not for he has not even used for okay. he may have used a fixed uh... all loop in the next week we can use a continuous iteration okay he has only used strings uh, okay so what we can do is we can take word of zero index yeah so where in this word so where in the alphabet the suckers Eight. and he also introduces that mod 26 so that if it is yeah. z it will move on to a right got it okay so that's correct so alpha dot index of word of 0 plus shift so you are shifting this index by 3 and you are taking mod 26 is that correct yes sir okay so this is clear to you what we are doing here sir uh, shifting is okay but uh, i am not able to understand mod 26 if we do mod 26 then it will again come back to uh, something a like no correct so if you are shifting c z for example right so if you are in z and you want to shift it by 3 where will you go in c right yeah So what is the index of z? Twenty-five, right? Twenty-five. Yes. So if you shift it by three, and you divide, you take mod twenty-six. You end up with two, right? Which is zero, one, two. Which is c. Which is what we want. Yeah. That's what he has done. So. So why we use a mod of twenty-six? Because if you take the remainder, you will keep cycling between zero and twenty-five, right? So. Yes. So this whole thing works in cycles. So zero to twenty-five, the remainder is zero to twenty-five. Twenty-six is again remainder zero, and then you keep cycling. So by using the mod, you can cycle back to the beginning of the string. Uh, sir, for getting Z, we are uh, doing twenty-five mod twenty-six. Uh, for right. getting uh, for getting the yeah shifted value of z we are doing the shifted index yes so this is the shifted index right so this is uh, what we do now instead of doing so we have understood the loops part what we do is we iterate through the string right so if we iterate through the string and compute the shift index and compute what the shift index is indexes and add it to a new word so i miss we'll discuss this at the beginning of next session okay so if you don't understand this don't worry no uh we should ideally end up with 
what is it? We should ideally end up with uh, S D L U. Okay, so you can iterate through strings. That's what we are doing here. So we are going through each character. First, we first character will be P, then it will be A, then A I, then R. So when it is P, alpha dot index of P will be what? Some number, right? Wherever it is in this alphabet list, that that will be the index. Then you are shifting it, and then you are seeing where it lies here. Okay, whether it has over short z in that case you will go back and cycle back to the beginning that will be your new index so i'll call this new index so once you know what the new index is you can find out what the new character is you know you have to keep adding this new character to your encoded word or new word so i'm sorry this may not be clear now but we'll discuss this again but was it at least marginally clear Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Can we use, sir? Can we use odd and chr function? Sir? Yes, I believe you can. You can convert it to the ASCII and pick back. But uh, yeah, so let's maybe stick to what sir has done in lectures. So is it still confusing or? Question. Sir, yeah. One more question. Sir was shifting like uh, one one after the other. Like uh, P will be shifted to Q, A will be shifted to B, mm, and right. I will be shifted to like that. So it will be. But in this, we will get uh, if we write this code divide by twenty six, then we will get C, and if we shift by one also, we will get A. Uh, this one pair for this word you are saying or for some other word? For pair only I am saying. If... No, 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 no. You want to shift by one, is it? Yeah. Okay. So you will get a Q, a B, yeah, B, I, J, and R is this, right? So Q, B, J is. Huh. Q, B, J. I, J, and Yes. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Right. So, what is your question? Your question is how it. I mean, I didn't get the question. Actually. Just how this will be executed? If we divide, like I'm not able to understand uh, divided by twenty six clearly. Okay. So assume that there are only five alphabets in your so five letters in your alphabet. Okay. You are you are you know only five alphabet. You don't know anything more than that. Okay, all words have to be formed using these five okay. alphabets. Then what you do is the what are the indices for them? One, zero, one, two, three, four, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, now if you are shifting, if you are shifting something by one. So I want to shift everything by one. So if I want to shift E by one, I should get A, right? Yeah, yes, so, sir. So the index of E is four. Now, if I want to shift four by one, if I want to shift anything by one, I add the shift index to it. So four plus one becomes five. Now, is five there in this index list? Four. Index is zero to four, right? Five is not there. Yes, yes, not there, sir. So if five has to stand for A, what should I do? One of the methods is I take the remainder when you divide five by five. So that will help me cycle back to the beginning, which is zero. Okay, sir. Okay, so so you have to just play around with this mod operator and see how it works. So that's the trick. The trick is all about why you are using mod. So that can be confusing if you are encountering it for the first time, but if you get used to it. It will be quite clear. So just try it out with the alphabet length of five. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, so shall we close the session then and meet again next week? Uh, sir, one last doubt. Yeah. Uh, can we take this shift and uh, the word as input so that this can be generalized for any words? 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, that can be. Yeah, you can just turn this into input. Yeah, you can modify it. That. Sir, I can I say something? Yeah. Sir, actually, I can't uh, access the discourse in our uh, so that. I can't access it with the invite link that was sent me on January. So, will they send me another invite link this time or in this term? Or is there any problem? problem? Uh, they should have sent, I believe. They did not send any invite link this time. So, I'm, I'm, I'm unable to uh, access the discourse. So. I think discourse link is only sent for once.